Hey, good afternoon, YouTube. This is a doctor coming at you from Park City, Utah. And uh, just a little update on our friend and every uh, YouTube's favorite police officer, Jaime Rodriguez of Park City, Utah Police Department. Uh, we just got a full written copy of a written written reprimand. Sorry, having a little trouble talking today. Uh, let's go through it. I'm going to try and just keep it to the high points. Um, there's a, I'm going to kind of ruin it for you at the end. All of what Rodriguez has been told to do by his command, he refuses to do. He refused to sign the reprimand. And not only is he completely disrespectful of the public, he is in contempt of command as well. So um, just amazing that this guy has a job. So let's walk through it. Uh, this is a report that was given to him by his captain, Andrew Lethem. I will also, of course, include a full copy of everybody in the department's email address that has anything to do with this, if you'd like to call and voice your opinion. There, as we've known before, there were five counts against Rodriguez. We're going to do separate videos on Thor and Ware on their counts. We'll walk through their written uh, or, or verbal reprimands, whatever they got. Anyway, incident summary, you guys hopefully have seen the initial video. I'll include it in the links below. But uh, September 29th, 2019, there was a disturbance at my residence or in the general area. Got a uh, neighbor and I got into a minor argument. It was reported. Uh, it was about regarding he threatened my kids or uh, my kid and his friend. Um, anyway, cops were called about a little incident. Somebody said I had a gun. Uh, didn't turn out to be true. No gun was recovered, so on and so forth. Um, anyway, during the father was arrested and later filed a formal complaint. That was the next day, which alleged, alleged Fourth Amendment violations, First Amendment violations, use of force, false arrest, and false reporting. So these have all pretty much all those that, that I've claimed have this has been somewhat even sustained just by the Park City Police Department. We're going to go through the five policy violations by this guy, Rodriguez. Number one, this is what the police internal affairs came up with. Discourteous and disrespectful. The alleged policy violation is sustained because throughout the incident, you did nothing to de-escalate the situation. The investigation found that myself and my son were argumentative and difficult to deal with. Let's keep this in context, guys, parentheses. Someone kicks in the door to your house, tases you in, fr in front of your 15-year-old son. I'm sure it's, uh, you know, we're, I didn't say a word, basically. I just said, I won't talk, I'm not making a statement, so I'll talk to my lawyer. My kid, on the other hand, was a freaking warrior. So you guys probably know that from the previous videos, but he was unbelievable. Uh, sorry. Concluded that you failed to maintain a professional and calm demeanor and that your behavior, Rodriguez, made matters worse and frustrated support officers. You appeared to have difficulty controlling your anger and stress, which caused your attention to become divided, making the scene unsafe. For the prisoner, others involved, and your fellow officers. It's all about officer safety. But not only is he endangering officers, but everybody, every everybody, as a result of the continued bickering. Now, again, there was no bickering with me. I promise you, look at the video. He was bickering with a 15-year-old kid who absolutely owned him. And all the other cops, too. Resolution was not obtained about the initial disturbance incident. Resolution was also not obtained about the whereabouts of the alleged gun. During the course of the investigation, your supervisor told your supervisor, that's the cap, the, the sergeant, told Lieutenant Little that he was not happy with your handling of the situation and your lack of communication regarding your intended actions prior to the arrest and your actions after the arrest. In other words, he had no plan. He didn't know what he was doing. You admitted during the course of the internal affairs investigation, Rodriguez, that you became confused about how things happened and which officers were present at certain times during the incident. You attributed your confusion to the stress of a situation. Law enforcement situations can be very stressful and can be far more stressful than this particular incident. We're talking about a neighborhood disagreement, and this guy comes in like it's a freaking SWAT, it's like it's a felony SWAT incident. Law, da, 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 da. Law enforcement situations can be very stressful, I'm sorry, and far more stressful than this particular incident. It is concerning that you appeared to lose control of your emotions and anger. 
Your failure, Rodriguez, to control your anger and stress contributed to a chaotic scene that was never properly controlled. It was also supervised by the sergeant who was now fired and ultimately led to your actions being filmed. Oh my God, the First Amendment and posted on various social media outlets. These guys are really concerned about optics. Number two. Let's go to the next one. That's just the actual thing. Public, okay, this is the First Amendment violation. The second violation is number two. I call it a First Amendment violation. It is, I don't care what anybody says. The internal investigation revealed a policy, a violation of policy occurred and is sustained when you fail to provide specific instructions at your earliest opportunity as to where Jack, my minor, could safely exercise his First Amendment right. In instructing a person to merely stand back does not meet the requirements of the policy and does not allow for compliance. Adherence to this policy may have eliminated the circumstance that allowed Jack to run up behind you and your statement to him that you were going to place him on the ground. That in itself is incorrect. The statement, and you can look back at the video, there's even a shortened video of it, but he says, Rodriguez says to a 15 year old boy, while he's trying to, while the boy is trying to stop him from violating a Fourth Amendment by, via warrantless entry, Rodriguez says, you take one more step and I'll slam you face first into the ground. Okay? Um, so, that was, okay, as soon as practical, you should have addressed the young minor and provided him with clear parameters of where he could properly and safely exercise his First Amendment right to film without interfering with officers and compromising scene safety. You told him to get back several times. These commands were vague and general and difficult to comply with. This resulted in Jack inter interjecting himself at several locations throughout the incident. This policy clearly defines the steps that are required and that you did not do. Had this policy been followed, this scene have con better con could have been better controlled and made sa safer for everyone involved. During the internal affairs investigation, one of the officers who was on scene, this is the one honest officer, God bless it, the, this anonymous man, I hope you're watching. He, he said this about this one officer on scene who's not identified said, and this is including the supervisor, the sergeant, there was no supervision, there was no correction, no control or direction from the existing off the arresting officer or from the scene supervisor in working together as a team to, to de-escalate the situation. Complete nightmare. Okay, so this next one is report preparation. I think it's number three. Um, he basically lied and made omissions and errors like crazy on his report specifically i it says here a review of your reports regarding this incident found that important elements omitted from your report specifically when jack ran up behind you this was a critical point in the incident and should have been very thoroughly documented you wrote in your report jack attempted to step in front of us and yelled that we could not enter the residence now let's put this in perspective jack came up and instructed the officers not to violate and his Fourth Amendment rights and complete a warrantless entry upon his residence. Rodriguez's response is, take one step further and I'm going to slam you face first into the concrete. He neglected to put that on his report. Anyway, you wrote in your report, Jack attempted to step in front of us and we could not enter the residence. While Officer Proctor kept Jack back, I found my body camera on the ground just inside the entry door to the residence, admitting that he did another, a second warrantless entry. It was Sergeant Cameron Thor who held Jack at bay, not Officer Proctor. This was most likely a simple error in writing the correct name. However, this does not excuse omitting the comments that you made to Jack. Comments, not comments. These were terroristic threats. Nowhere. In the initial report or supplements, does it indicate that the subject, myself, was frisked upon detention or searched incident prior to the arrest, prior to being placed in the priest car? These are key elements that have shot, should not have been admitted. Both frisk and search were observed on body cam video. Okay, let's just keep this going, guys. So far, this guy has no idea which cop is who. He has no idea. He forgets that he told the kid he's going to slam him face first into the ground. He forgets key points. 
errors and omissions all over, can't observe basic police policy, violates the First Amendment. Let's get to the next one. Prisoner management, sustained. The internal affairs investigation realized the violation of policy occurred and is sustained when you, Rodriguez, fail to maintain constant watchful care of an arrestee or have another officer do so. The arrestee was secured in handcuffs behind his back after an altercation that included Rodriguez, excessive use of force tasering me. I'm paraphrasing. The arrestee, who was a large person, I have big shoulders, I have big arms, and I was, the, the arrestee who was a large person was, I asked for two sets of handcuffs because they were killing me and they were twisting me. What The arrestee who was a large person was placed in a caged area of your police car. The door was eventually closed. No car windows were open. Not even, they, for a canine, they'd open the windows. The prisoner was left alone on scene like this on at least three different occasions for the span of minutes each on each occasion. Okay, this next one is a real winner. I'm going to continue on this one. Um, okay. After the arrest of me, myself, the doctor, you failed to comply with this policy by taking the necessary steps. Wait, sorry, I missed something. Okay, although several officers were in general proximity to the vehicle where I was temporarily jailed, no officers were assigned by the scene supervisor or you, the arresting officer, to maintain prisoner officer observation. Officers could not see clear through the closed and tinted windows. Lieutenant Little, the investor, the IA guy, concluded his report in the following statement. It is conceivable to consider that after a fight, after being tased, after being handcuffed behind his back, and after being placed as a large person in the confines of a cage in the backseat of a police vehicle, that excited delirium could have occurred. It is also conceivable that the doctor, myself, could have become unconscious and could have expired. That means died, people, before any law officer or medical personnel discovered him dead. Okay, last one, policy... Uh, Battle. The internal investigation determined the violation of policy occurred and is sustained when you, the arresting officer, fail to assure or have another officer assure that the arrestee's 15-year-old son and his 15-year-old friend were placed in the care of a responsible adult when the only responsible when the arrestee was taken to the hospital and then to jail. Whenever it is safe to do so, officers should allow the parent or the caregiver to be determined that they were provided proper care. They made no attempt. They left the kids alone during the booking process. Okay. After the arrest of myself, you failed to comply with this policy by taking the necessary steps to ensure that the two juvenile males were properly cared for after the arrest, after the only adult caregiver at the arrest residence was arrested. As the responsible officer, that's a stretch with Rodriguez, you should have been keenly aware of this policy and taken the necessary steps to delegate these duties to another officer or handle them yourself. This guy couldn't handle a one-car accident. During the course of the internal affairs investigation, myself expressed my concern to the, to the investigator that my kid was left alone after the arrest. You had this massive incident, and then they just leave the kids alone. So... I'm going to try and wrap this up for you real quick, guys. Here is what he has been ordered and has refused to do. Corrective action plan and timeline for completion, Rodriguez. This reprimand will be well documented and in your evaluation and placed in your personnel file. It is expected that conditions noted will be corrected immediately. In accordance with city policy, you are placed on notice that any substandard performance, you will get disciplinary action. I'm just paraphrasing. Park City doesn't have to warn you or anything. We can do whatever we want. The intent of this corrective action plan is to assist you, Rodriguez, in resolving your substandard performance that constrains you from becoming a successful Park City police officer. Number one, this reprimand restricts you from receiving a performance bonus or pay raise for this evaluation period. Number two, you will not be able to apply for any special assignments or promotion for one year from the date shown below. Effective immediately, you will be removed from your traffic special assignment for becoming of a department instructor. What does he instruct on civil rights violations? Number three, you'll be suspended without pay for two days. 
20 hours. The two-day suspension will be terminated by the chief. Number four, within one week after this report, you were to write a supplement in the initial report specifically and accurately describing the incident and where your current report suffers omissions and errors. Number five, I love it. You will attend sessions regarding anger management and stress management, the licensed psychologist selected by the department. The number of sessions will be determined by the psychologist and will, after, will re include a recommendati recommendation regarding your fitness for duty. These sessions will be paid for by the department, in other words, the public, and incorporated into your regular work schedule. So we pay for his shrink and we pay for his time to go to the shrink. Number six, you will research a training course which addresses de-escalation and communication skills within six months. That's police academy. Come on. Work Number seven, work with uh, 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 civilian officers and people that have been directed directly impacted by this case. You will prepare an after-action presentation and then present it to the entire department, and that's to be completed by July 30th, 2020. Bottom of the thing, supervisor's signature dated 1-14-2020. Employee signature, it says, employee refused to sign. That's Brooke Walters, it looks like, who signed it, and someone else who, I think it's Andrew Latham, the captain, who, all, who also initialed it. So not only is this guy a complete nightmare, does everything wrong, gets found guilty of five may, pretty major violations, there's pretty strongly worded there, he refuses to accept his punishment or sign his admonishment. He is in complete, not only does he disrespect the public and ha is hateful, angular, angerful, twisted, he hates his command and is in complete, has complete lack of respect for his command. He's an embarrassment and I have no idea why he's still on the force. Anyway, YouTube, I never intended to be a YouTuber. I, ne I love your support. I never intended to be a police accountability inspector or whatever the heck you want to call me, but I'm passionate about this. I'm glad that you all are passionate about it, and I appreciate your support. I'm out.